Hello from Moscow. It's, uh, wow, can you see all these seeds? Well, a few days ago it was even worse than that. Apparently it's poplar seeds. Here they're called poplar fluff. And it's been falling like snow for the past couple of weeks. This shows you how many trees there are in this city. So it's fine, apart from the fact that I swallow so much of it when I'm riding. Well, it's uh, Sunday morning. It's late Sunday morning though, so I don't really expect it to be very quiet. Early Sunday mornings are the quietest time of the week in Moscow. But I think once it gets to 11, it's the same as any other day. Although a lot of Muscovites will be out at their country houses, their dachas. This is the kind of weather you want to enjoy in the countryside. But a city in the summer has its charms as well. All right. So a few weeks ago I started riding fixed gear. <clears throat> My bike is a single speed, but it can be converted just by flipping the back wheel around to a fixed gear bike. <clears throat> so a single speed has just one gear, but a fixed gear, as well as just having one gear, has a fixed back cog so that you cannot coast. Single speed has a freewheel, so you can stop pedaling anytime you want, and it click, 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 clicks around. Most bikes have a freewheel. But with a fixed gear, if the bike is moving, you have to pedal. Or take your feet off the pedals. <clears throat> so, uh, track bikes, the bikes that they use on um, velodromes, they're fixed gear bikes. <clears throat> yep. okay. Still getting used to this. It's a totally different way of riding. It's been a few weeks, but I'm still
still getting used to it. Now, I'm struggling here to get my fucking, <laughs> to get my foot into the foot strap. One of the things they say that you must do, you must have, if you're riding fixed gear, is foot retention. Either the clip-in pedals, toe clips, or what I have, foot straps. That's because um, when you're riding fixed gear, you, uh, well, conventionally, you use back pressure on the pedals to regulate your speed. Because it's a fixed gear, you're totally connected and you can, you can even pedal backwards if you want to. So, some of the hardcore fixed gear people, they don't have brakes. They just use back pressure on the pedals or skidding to slow down and stop. I think that's foolish. So I've kept the brakes on mine. I'm not quite convinced about the need for foot retention. Anyway, so as I was saying, it's a completely different way of riding. You can never stop pedaling. I've been riding a bike for decades. And I've always enjoyed coasting. No, even when I'm going down a hill, I can't coast. I've got to either slow down or pedal super fast. The question is why? Why would I do this to myself? bad enough that having a single gear makes it quite difficult to climb hills. But then when I get to the top of the hill, go down the other side, I can't even enjoy it anymore because I have to slow down. Whereas before on the single speed I could, uh, I could coast and go as fast as I want. Well, So the question is why? A lot of people say it's just because it's more fun. But then they don't always explain what they mean. Why is it more fun? 
And then some people say they have a more connected feeling. They feel at one with the bike. They feel more in control. That in itself um, makes the experience more enjoyable. I'm not sure I feel more in control. So, there are a few things that are much more difficult on fixed gear. One is going downhill, like I said. Also, going round a bend. On a normal bike with a freewheel, you can position the pedals so that you don't strike the ground. So you put your downward pedal uh, facing outwards to the outside of the bend. Well, you can't do that uh, on fixed gear, you just have to keep pedaling. So you have to take corners a bit slower, and make sure you don't lean over too much. And the same thing goes for avoiding obstacles like speed bumps, going around the end of speed bumps. Sometimes I strike the pedals now that I'm on fixed gear. So, so far I don't feel in, in that much more control. I think in, in other areas Maybe I do feel like I'm in more control, like uh, when it comes to balance and basic bike skills, I feel I've really uh, improved since I started riding fixed gear. It's a challenge and it really makes you, it makes you better at, at cycling in general. Now I can, I can balance in one place now. I couldn't do before. Oh, um, let's see. Right, let's take the road. to me most about fixed gear riding I think it's aesthetic it's the minimal aesthetic I said a while back that I've I've retained the uh, brakes but in fact, I removed the back brake. Virtually all the stopping power from brakes is from the front brake. And the stopping, what stopping power I do need from the back, I can use my legs and the back pressure on the pedals to achieve. So I don't actually need the back brake. So there's less clutter on the bike. Today though, I have lots of clutter on the bike. Now, the whole thing about fixed gear riding is never put your, never stop, never, well, Never put your feet in the ground.
I do understand the appeal of that. And I'm trying I'm trying to do it that way. But with all the stopping and starting in in the city, it's not easy. Learning how to balance in place is uh has been helpful. But then when I lose my balance and I'm wearing I've got the foot straps, I fall over. So fuck. a free junction that one the cool thing about it is though everyone slows down well, I'll say everyone but of course there's always going to be a few idiots which makes that kind of junction a bit dangerous for Cycling. So, was I still talking about fixed gear riding? Yeah. Uh, it's a. Uh, I'm not yet sure how to feel about the subculture. People will tell you you're an idiot if you don't use foot retention. But everyone rides differently. I don't intend to be using skids to stop. I have my front brake. My knees can't really take it. So I'm just not riding like the crazy fixed gear riders you see. It's uh you know, it's a hipster subculture of uh, people who ride very often, pretty dangerously. Okay. Right, how the fuck? bit lost at that junction there. Forgot how it worked. Over there is the Danilovsky market. Magnificent Soviet modernist design. Another modernist building over there, very different. Less space age, more bunker like. I think that is the mint. You may notice that I'm doing a wee bit more road riding today. I think that's the that's the fixed gear influence. Although I won't be doing as much as I have been recently because I'm making the video and I prefer to prefer to take it easier when I'm making a video. 
let's go see the foot straps you just can't get I can't get into them in a situation like that So it's about getting through the junction and then stopping to put my feet back in the straps after the junction. It's just lame. Believe it or not, there are people who search the web looking for the kind of nuggets of wisdom that I've been sharing with you so far today about fixed gear riding. But I may have misjudged my audience here. So, although this is, um, have intended this channel to be for me to talk to myself it's talking to myself and um, because in everyday life It's as if I have an audience already. I think I've said this before somewhere. If I was a religious person, it would uh, I would describe it as talking to God and suggest it's a, a common human impulse talk as if someone is listening even when there's nobody listening the source of religion you see I got my foot straps I'm trying not to touch the ground I could do a track stand here here we go I'm balancing how long can I do it though? Oh, it's alright Relax. This is not bad. Shit, come on. <laughs> oh, fuck it. No. It's stressful. It should be relaxing. But that's just a bit too long. Although I heard the, the record for a track stand, which is where you balance without moving forward or back is ours, I think. Let's go.
So it's been about, it's been getting up to about 30 degrees in Moscow for the past few days. busy roads like this and talk at the same time. Keeping myself alive is the priority. And I hope you can understand that. Right, I don't know what the hell to do with this junction, so... being beeped. Although, perhaps he had a point. I was slowing down a lot there and he was trying to turn. I shouldn't have slowed down. It's a real commitment to ride on big roads. You've got you to gotta keep up the pace. Let's do it. Hey, look at this. Acha. Acha cha cha. That looks nice. I'm talking about that bar with the terrace outside that we just passed. This time of year, you're always looking for terraces. bars with verandas. One of the reasons I decided to take the road today is just to get to the city centre as quickly as possible. I haven't done a lot of filming in the, the very centre of the city. So, I'm heading north right now, from where I live in the south of the city. The river at this point, if you were to iron out all the meanderings, I guess you could say it's roughly to east. So heading north now, I'll be crossing the river. This is a nice part of town. The 
it's not too touristy. But there's a lot going on. Tretyakovskaya is that metro station we've just passed. Because the Tretyakov Gallery is around here somewhere. So this is one of the old parts of the city, as you can tell. Lamborghini there. I don't know. Should I go straight across the river this way? I don't know. Could be a nightmare. Go this way. again right found enough of the roads for now da -na -da -na. I've got a I've got a song in my head and I just can't stop myself singing it but I can't sing it I don't know any words in it it's one of those songs that it relies on so much more than a vocal melody line so it's just not captured at all when I try to sing it When I was out last night and took a wee phone video of people dancing overlooking the big fire that was happening across the river, this song was playing and uh, yeah, it's really stuck in my head, but it's uh, the rhythm and texture, perhaps more than the melody that's stuck in my head. I think we're used to thinking that an earworm is uh, catchy because of the melody, but it's not always that. must have something to do with it. Nobody, um, nobody gets a, a drum beat in their head, do they? No, a rhythm. I'm probably wrong about that, probably varies. I think to percussionists, people very sensitive to rhythm they probably do get rhythm stuck in their head. I don't think I do though. I didn't mention, but we just crossed over 
the canal, the something canal. I can't remember what it's called. Now we're going to cross the river itself and uh, going past the going past the Kremlin on its uh, western side. show you. There we are. Oh, you see this building here. I think this is the old British Embassy, which would mean the more modern building there is the the new part of it. I think this is the original part. I don't know though, because maybe I'm confusing it. Well, there's the Cathedral of Christ the Saviour. That's called by some people the House of Government. There's a block of flats built in the 20s and 30s, I think, for party officials, top Bolsheviks, and so on, the political upper class. And what makes it quite famous is that in Stalin's great terror of the late 30s, or mid 30s, uh, I think around a third of the people living in that building were either sent to the Gulag or executed. So it's a... Uh, there's a book about it, in fact, I haven't read it yet. It must be a fascinating story because... I mean, when they moved in, it was such a hopeful time. for many of these Bolsheviks, at least the well-meaning ones. Uh, but it was a tragedy in the true sense of the word, meaning there was, there was something in the whole project that would lead inevitably to disaster.
Okay. Vladimir the Great. Here's the Kremlin. And this park next to the Kremlin here is the Alexander Garden. That's one of the main entrances to the Kremlin there. Inside the Kremlin you can see there one of the few modern buildings. And that's a conference center also used as a concert hall. Straight ahead here, this is another kind of exhibition center. One of the old exhibition halls. At the center of the power of the Russian state. And it's fairly relaxed. Of course, the Kremlin is only the symbolic center of power now. Well, there are government buildings and staff working inside at the Senate House, I think. I'm not sure about that. Um, I mean, not the, not the Duma, which is the parliament, that's somewhere else. And the government, which is the prime minister's division of government, that's, um, that's in the White House. So what's in the Kremlin? Well, there's the official residency of president, but he doesn't stay there. Well, he could if he wanted, but Putin chooses not to. And there's all the historic stuff, the museums, the cathedrals, there's the concert hall and exhibition center. And there is a bunch of buildings, I think called this the Senate, which has some kind of governmental function. But uh, I honestly don't know. I suppose I would have to know if I ever try to get Russian citizenship. Which I would only ever do, by the way, if I could keep my British citizenship. So, straight ahead there is a museum, that straight ahead now is that's still part of the Kremlin. I still haven't been to that museum. And there is the Duma straight ahead. Is that the Russian State Duma? Yes, State Duma.
there is a shopping mall underneath me right now and metro station. Seems to be security at Red Square. I don't think I mentioned, but Red Square is just up there. I wasn't intending to go into Red Square anyway, because it's one of the few places in Moscow where cycling is positively prohibited. I need to get fatter tires. The city's a bit bumpy. I'm guessing, well, the, um, there's been a huge spike in COVID-19 infections over the past few weeks and Moscow has started to panic a wee bit. Well, maybe that's unfair. I guess they're just doing what needs to be done. Or what? Uh, what they think needs to be done. So people who work in shops are now required to be vaccinated. And that's quite an extreme regulation. And um, <clears throat> until quite recently, you could freely walk into a shop without a mask and nobody would say anything. But they're really cracking down on that now, since the latest uptick in infections. And I think the, the barrier there to Red Square was maybe something to do with that as well. Normally you can pretty freely come and go around here. Incidentally, I found, notwithstanding all the security measures at the moment, I, I found it much freer in the city centre than I felt London was. You know, I remember walking around the city of London trying to take photographs and apart from the Barbican complex, which is fantastic, it was a really unpleasant experience. I should mention that that is the Bolshoi Theatre, home of the famous Bolshoi Ballet. Bolshoi meaning 
something big. But I don't want to have to use the underpass to cross the road, so I won't cross the road. We'll go up here. Up here to the Lubyanka. Home to KGB and FSB headquarters. And formerly a very nasty prison. where countless people were tortured, especially during the 1930s. That's the Lubyanka building, straight ahead. an icon of horrific repression and yet it still houses an FSB department Bianca Square over there, empty as usual. The statue of Felix Dzerzhinsky, the founder of the Cheka, the first Soviet secret police. That stood there until it was pulled down in 1991. Now it stands in the graveyard of fallen statues. Which I will go to one day. The only place you can find a statue of Stalin that I know of. Oh, my damn foot straps are, you know, I am about done with these foot straps. Let me sort this out. these electric scooters. These have been controversial in Russia recently, especially in St. Petersburg. And we were just in St. Petersburg last weekend and uh, electric scooters were always going to be a big part of um, our transport there such a great way of getting about a city but a couple of days before we went they were banned after a number of collisions between scooters and um, pedestrians Yeah, they were banned. But obviously there were intense negotiations going on behind the scenes between the scooter companies, namely Whoosh and Urent and a few others, all Russian companies. And uh, 
between them and the local government. And so the day after they were banned, they were reintroduced, but with some heavy restrictions. So speed limits in certain areas, and then other areas where uh, red zones, where you're forbidden to ride them at all. And so planning a route on the scooters was very difficult. You go through a red zone, your scooter just stops working. So it's not like you can just break the rules. At one point, the, the red zones actually changed in the middle of one of our rides, where we were at the time, originally wasn't in a red zone, but then suddenly it was in the middle of a red zone. And we had to push our heavy scooters half a kilometer until we could ride them again. Uh, I was grumpy that day. I have to confess, this is nice. What made it worse is that in St. Petersburg city centre, it's not like Moscow with the wide sidewalks. You have cobbled streets and narrow, uneven sidewalks with very high curbs. It's a bit of a nightmare, but still better than walking. What's wrong with walking, you might say? Well. I mean, I used to be a big walker, but I'm not so into walking anymore, especially around the city. I think actually the walking slowly can be more tiring than walking purposefully. If you're just kind of wandering and you're on hard paved surfaces. Walking around the city can be a bit tedious. Heading back towards the river now. Heading towards the eastern end of the Kremlin at the moment. You might just be able to see St. Basil's Cathedral as well, 